Hey guys, welcome to March Favorites. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to sit here, chat with you about all of the products that I used in the month of March, all of the products that I really loved. I wanted to do some comparisons as well. I also wanted to give you a quick review of the newest fragrance released by Hermes. I have some interesting thoughts that I wanted to share with you. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't have makeup on right now. I only have a light layer of tinted moisturizer because I want to show you, demonstrate some of the products that I am going to be showing. So let's go ahead and get started. Grab a cup of coffee or whatever your preferred beverage is and also leave me a comment. Let me know what were your favorites. And this is just a friendly, honest beauty talk. Some of the products that I don't like, they might end up being your favorite. So that's nothing wrong about that. We are just friends talking about makeup products and sharing our honest opinion and our honest thoughts. So even if you do not agree with me about a certain product, let us know in the comments. I think this is going to be useful and also scroll the comments and see what other people are liking. So let's go ahead and get started. Excuse my hair, it's flying all over the place. But I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I'm taking a little bit longer break from heat. So I don't use any heat on my hair right now. I want to start by sharing with you skincare favorites because I'm going to change my skincare routine right now because I just purchased some new products and I'm going to introduce them to my skincare routine. But I wanted to share with you a couple of serums that I really, really like. I have been enjoying using these two serums in conjunction in the past like more than a month, I think maybe a couple of months already, and I really love the results on my skin. So this is the Genifique Advanced Serum, and then I follow with the Renergy Serum from Lancome, the Triple Serum. I really like those two. Um, Lancome just released a face cream from the same line. I am definitely going to try this one. So save your money. I'm going to give you a review. I'm going to try the cream. I adore the serum. I would absolutely recommend it to everyone. So I just wanted to mention these two products because I'm going to change my skincare right now. And then a while ago, I purchased the Cislia eye cream. This is one of the eye creams that I keep repurchasing. I have been repurchasing over the years. Now it has a thick consistency and it has this little massage tool. Now in one of my previous videos, I uh, said that I prefer the La Roche-Posay Tolerian eye cream and I get better results than the Sisley eye cream, than the Sislia eye cream. Well, I started to use this one on myself again uh, because now my under eye area has calmed a lot. I really like it. Now, if you're in a budget, apparently you can just go ahead and use this one. This one has niacinamide. This one has botanical extracts. It's typical for the Sisley skincare. I really like this eye cream and I saw some results on my partner. I started using it on my partner and um, I've seen a lot of improvement in his under eye area. He's rosacea prone with very sensitive skin. So I really like the effect on him. I love the effect on me as well because I reintroduced it into my skincare routine. So Sisley recently had a 20% off sale. So if you want to try it, I think now is the right time to try this moisturizer because for some people it works very well. For me, it has been working for years. Then suddenly it stopped working when my under eye area was very irritated and I preferred using the Dermalergo by La Roche-Posay, but now I'm back to this one and I enjoy the results that I'm getting. Now, one thing that I think one of the reasons why I enjoy this one so much is because of this little massage tool. I don't have such a similar massage tool and nothing can replace it. It is like irreplaceable for this part of the eye because it fits right under the eye and you can very easily roll this one. Now, lately in the past month, I have been experiencing a little bit of puffiness because my allergy started to act up. And this is when I've seen like, really nice results from this cream but I think it might be because of the this little massage tool. I like to put this one in the fridge right before using it and then just I'm going to apply the cream and then roll for a minute or so on each eye. Then I like to use it right here as well and then I like to use it on my smile lines as well. Now, this is, it just happened so that I had a little bit more free time so I could spend in the morning and in the evening. Well, in the evening, I do it every evening, but then in the morning, it just happened that I had the time to do this little massage on my face and I see 
a very nice result. I see a difference. I definitely saw a difference in my in the puffiness under my eyes. It literally disappeared after like a, a week or so of using this. The puffiness under my eyes disappeared. So I'm very happy about that. I wanted to share this with you. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of lip balm because my lips feel incredibly dry right now. And this is gonna be a favorite as well. This is the second one that I purchased. Um, so this is the Guerlain Fuchsia Glow. I always have this one in my handbag because you can see it just brings a little bit of life to my face. The color. It's lovely. It always brings just a little bit of life to my complexion. Next we're moving on to powder and you're going to see, those of you who are following me, this is going to come as no surprise. I have been back to using my favorite Givenchy Prisma Libre loose powder. This one was in Satin Blanc and it's finished. I don't have anything. And here is the new one. The new one I repurchased, Mousseline Pastel. I usually go in between these two shades. They both work very well for my skin. Then this is the Mousseline Pastel. Let's go ahead and open it together. So this is a fresh new powder. I really, really love this one. Now this is the best powder if you are experiencing, if you want this really poreless, completely flawless effect. I have a technique, an application technique, and this is with a um, damp sponge. Make sure that you squeeze out all the water from the damp sponge in a towel and then take a little bit of powder and just press the powder into the skin. A lot of you have said that this application trick works like a dream. It works for all loose powders, but this one in particular is better than any other loose powder that I've used in my entire life. It is perfect for setting the foundation and it doesn't look like powder, it just erases pores and imperfections. So I really love it. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this one right now. It comes with a little sponge, which I don't use, but I like to use a damp beauty blender. And then uh, the other loose powder that I wanted to share with you and that I have been using a lot is the Le Mer loose powder. Now the difference between those two is this one, just doesn't add any color to my face and doesn't add any coverage to my face. This one, it is very finely milled, but it does add a little bit of color to my face. Um, it is slightly yellowish. It has this little Lumiere puff inside. It is quite messy, so you have to be careful. Ooh, can the camera focus? Okay, so it is a little bit messy because it has this little puff here and you're going to see now as I remove the puff that the holes are quite big. So it's gonna be a mess when you start taking it out. But what I love about this powder is that it still has some of the Le Mer skincare benefits. And I love to use this powder if I'm not wearing any foundation or tinted moisturizer or anything, because it just adds a little bit of, um, I wouldn't say even coverage, but a little bit of color maybe slightly a little bit of coverage and this is I use this powder only on top of my SPF because most of the times I wouldn't wear any tinted moisturizer or any foundation on a daily basis this is just when I'm going out and I'm going to use this powder on top I really really enjoy this powder but then I don't love it when I apply it on top of foundation I like it but don't love it as much as Givenchy because it doesn't create this completely flawless poreless beautiful effect on the skin and I'm all about the base I'm all about the skin looking absolutely beautiful and flawless so if you're wearing foundation or tinted moisturizer or any kind of base product I would say that this one is unbeatable it is my favorite I also love the Sisley loose powder but the Sisley loose powder is a lot more expensive and this one does the same job if not better than the Sisley I would say that the Sisley loose powder is probably going to be appreciated mostly from people who have dry skin this is for all skin types including dry but especially for oily skin it is irreplaceable for me. Next we're moving on to Chanel's Illuminating Blush Powder. I have been loving this one. I have been using it the whole month of March and now it's going to be available in the US as well. I wanted to quickly show you this one versus the House Labs Rose Quartz Highlighter. 
because they are very similar i posted also in the community tab of my youtube channel the two powders i'm going to go ahead and apply one on each side of my face right now so that you can see what is the difference actually and i need a brush okay so i'm taking chanel first this one is it's a blush on me but if i'm light-handed it can work as a well it, it can't really work as a highlighter on my skin because i'm too pale but it immediately gives me color. I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up. So here is how it looks. And I have a feeling that the camera is not picking that up a lot, but it immediately gives me a blushed color. It's just very subtle, very, I would say, very ethereal kind of glow blush. And then this one by House Labs. Now, this one is more affordable, and I know that the Chanel collection is quite limited. So you're probably not going to be, not everyone is going to be able to get it. But I can absolutely go out with this, like, one side and then the other side. Okay, so what do you think? Now, when I start applying the house laps, I get the color much quicker on my cheek. So you just have to be light-handed, but it's... I thought that they're going to be slightly different, but they're actually not. It just takes me a little bit more swipes to get this color with Chanel, and then with house laps, I have to be more light-handed because I get the color immediately, but I think that we can call them dupes. What do you think? Next, we're moving on to the famous Sublimash Concealer, which um, a lot of you have seen me to use this month, in the month of March, in my videos. And, you know, I have mixed feelings about this concealer. Now, this is a very good concealer, but uh, it's not my favorite. I'm using it, and you see me use this concealer because it's way too expensive, and I want to use it up because it's getting dry. Now, the thing here is that it is quite messy and I noticed that even though I haven't used it, it just started to dry. It started to, whoops, oops, disappear. Okay, that's why I don't like it because if, you, if you're if you not absolutely careful, you can easily drop it. Um, now with this concealer, I would say I understand some people, why some people might like it. It is a good concealer, but at the same time, I wouldn't recommend this concealer to people that are working professionals. So if you have to get up early in the morning, um, take a shower, do your skincare, hair, everything, makeup very quickly and go out, I don't think that this is the perfect concealer for professionals that are actually going to be in a hurry to go to work. You just want to wake up in the morning, do your makeup quite qu quickly, skincare, makeup, have breakfast probably. And it's not the best time to have this little ritual of opening the little jar and then taking the spatula, taking a small amount of the concealer and just applying it. I would say that this is probably for people that are more rich and can afford to have this whole ritual in the morning or you might enjoy using it in the weekend, during the weekend. And that's why I what I have been enjoying. So I have been using it for videos when I film. It's not better than the other more affordable concealers that I have. So my point here is that if you have the money and if you want to treat yourself to this concealer, then go ahead and do so. But it's not better than my other concealers. Let's say it's not better than my Giorgio Armani concealer. I'm definitely not repurchasing this one. It all depends where you are um, and what kind of a lifestyle you have. If you're rich, if you have the money to spend on this concealer, <laughs> or like me, if you have a YouTube channel and you just want to review it, or if you are a content creator, I understand why you might like it because you're gonna just sit, have a cup of coffee, have a relaxed, do your makeup, you know, in a relaxed way because that's what you do. This is your job, that's what you do. But if you're a working professional that has to really go out to work, and I'm here because I don't only create content for YouTube, but I have an actual job. 
Well, this just doesn't work for working professionals. So. Now, next we're moving on to a nail polish that I have been loving in the month of March. And even though I have short nails now, I don't have much time to take care of my nails. I do my nails alone. This is my favorite nail polish because it is the best, most beautiful red nail polish. I think it's one of my all-time favorite nail polishes. I just love it even though I have short nails now. I think that it just makes my nails look very beautiful. And it's... Look, I have powder on my nails. Anyways, you can see the nail polish. It's really, really good. It is quite watery, so the consistency is very thin. You definitely have to apply two layers, but once you apply two layers, it just makes everything so smooth and beautiful. I love it. It's my favorite. Next, we are moving on to two absolutely stunning red lipsticks. I've worn one of them in um, one of my French for a day videos where I talked about fragrances. I talked about iconic French perfumes. I'm going to link the video here so that you can see. And a few of you commented that this is my perfect red color. It was the Clé de Peau lipstick in Legend of Rouge. It's 103. I'm going to show you swatches now. And then the other lipstick that I have been loving is 113 Unapologetic. These are old favorites. They are not new favorites, but these are my all-time favorite red colors. Now, Legend of Rouge is this classic, absolutely gorgeous, timeless red color that is going to make your teeth appear whiter. I think that this is the red color that is going to suit most skin tones. It's just timeless, beautiful, gorgeous. The formulation is to die for. It's not too matte. It's not too shiny. It is just timeless, beautiful. One of my favorite lipstick formulations. It's incredibly expensive, but I think it's worth the splurge if you like and want to wear a red lipstick. And then the other one that I really love and I have been recommending in the past I believe this is the 113 and this is unapologetic it is a very interesting shade of red that is not too red but it has a little bit of this brick rusty color and this is the business red color this is the red color that you can safely wear in the office for a night out everywhere. But this is the lipstick that, you know, in the office sometimes it's a little bit intimidating to wear this kind of a Hollywood red color. Sometimes for some people it might be uncomfortable. And if you have a business meeting, it depends um, what your profession is. If you were a doctor or a lawyer or an architect, you might feel a little bit offended to wear this kind of red. I do. And I usually go for this red color because it's a lot more muted than I think that I find that it just works perfectly for a business environment. Okay, next we are moving on to two timeless eyeshadow palettes, three timeless eyeshadow palettes that I adore, love. I mostly used, most of the month I used the Chanel Tisse Vendôme eyeshadow palette. I love this one. It is a repurchase. And not many people talk about this eyeshadow palette. Not many people love it. I think that for spring, a lot of people go for the pinks and for the lilac and for the violet colors. And a lot of people forget how elegant these colors look. This is a timeless palette, but I especially love wearing it in the spring summer season because it's a different from all of the pinks that we see. In the spring, everyone goes for the pink and I always like to be different. I always like to have my own style. I always like to have my own rules if you want. So this is the colors that I go for when it's a spring season. Um, and I get so many compliments from you every time when I wear the eyeshadow palette. I'm going to actually link here a video where I wore this eyeshadow palette. So many of you said that this is like a perfect signature look. Yes, because you can use just these two top shades and then a little bit of this on the center of the eyelid or just these two are going to look absolutely beautiful on the eye. These eyeshadow palette is timeless, T7 Dome. So when everyone is wearing pink, I'm gonna wear this. And then moving on to two other Tom Ford eyeshadow palettes, I actually just saw when I was getting ready for this video, I saw that they are currently on sale. So you can get them for less. This is Tom Ford New Dip. I have it just in a limited edition black packaging. You know Tom Ford are often going to do this. They're going to release some um, limited edition packaging palettes. And if you want to see these colors, actually these two palettes, 
in natural light and swatched next to other neutral palettes. I'm going to have a link to a video where I show you all of these palettes, except for T7 Dome because it's a palette that I just repurchased, but it's one of my all time favorites. And then the other one from Tom Ford is Body Heat. I love these two, but if I had to pick, I would definitely go for Nude Dip. It's timeless, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Body Heat, I also love it, but it's going to be more suitable for those of you who are deeper than me. If you are have like medium skin tone, medium skin tone, deep medium skin tone to deep skin tone, I think that this one is going to be better than Nude Dip. And then if you're pale like me with fair skin tone, to light skin tone, I think that Nude Dip might be your best friend. It is timeless, beautiful, gorgeous, and the wet and dry formula from Tom Ford is truly spectacular. I love it. It is my favorite eyeshadow formula. It's hard to beat this one. Anyways, moving on to a beautiful blush that I wanted to share with you. This is a second one that I purchased. It's from By Terry, and this is the Brightening CC Liquid Blush. They just released a highlighter, which is in the same packaging, and I'm definitely going to try this one, let you know how it goes. But this is just a beautiful pink blush. And what I love about this one is that you can just put it in your handbag, apply it on the go, blend with fingers. Now this one blends so easily, so beautifully. You can build it up if you want to, uh, or you can shear it out. And it has this slight luminosity. Well, I'm repurchasing this one, so you can imagine how much I love it. And it smells of roses, which is adds something additional for me. Next, I have a Chanel product. This one is one of my all-time favorites. Again, a product that I keep repurchasing, but I think it's especially suitable for this time of the year. And it layers beautifully on top of other eyeshadows. So I'm gonna mention it. So this is the Stilo Ombre et Contour in Nude Eclat. It's beautiful. It is so incredibly beautiful. It works for everyone. I love it. You can use it as a one and done eye color or you can just apply this one as a base and then apply other eyeshadows on top. It always looks so beautiful. I have been repurchasing this one for the longest time. I don't even remember for how many years I, I keep repurchasing this one. It's just a staple in my makeup collection. We're moving on to fragrances. Now, I was mostly wearing this one. This is the Chance Au Tendre Eau de Parfum from Chanel. I love using this one in the spring summer season. Now, in my last favorites videos, I shared with you a favorite perfume that seems to be discontinued. I was just lucky enough to get one of the last bottles, so actually the last bottle at my local retailer, and that was the Prada Candy Eau Florale. This is a beautiful, sophisticated, elegant spring perfume. I'm so sorry to hear that Prada discontinued this one, but a lot of you asked me after I posted the video and then I went at my local retailer where I purchased this one and I asked them and it turns out that it is discontinued. It is my favorite Prada candy fragrance sadly discontinued but i have one that i could recommend it's not a dupe but it has a similar very elegant vibe just as candy of florare so these two have the same dna in terms of they are both beautiful floral fragrances very elegant clean smelling um and they are purely elegant fragrances. So this is Chloe Love Story. I know that everyone is obsessed with the Chloe signature fragrance, but I love Chloe Love Story. I prefer this one. It's a clean, beautiful, white floral fragrance with a touch of fruitiness, but just to soften the fragrance somehow. So it, this one has Neroli. If you love Neroli, I think that you're gonna love this fragrance. Neroli here just gives some a clean vibe to the fragrance. So it has peach, neroli, a touch of bergamot, but it's not citrusy. It has rose, peach, musk, cedar, a touch of patchouli, but the patchouli just adds a little bit of depth. It's not this deep, dark patchouli, but it's actually very bright, light patchouli, and I barely feel the patchouli here, actually. 
It's just a clean white floral scent. And then I wanted to quickly mention the latest fragrance that the House of Hermes released. And this is Jardin Inciter. This is a beautiful, soft, citrus woody fragrance, but then I have something to share with you. So this is a fragrance that is supposed to be for men and women. And both me and my partner tried this fragrance. Now I would say that this, to me, this is a very soft, citrus woody fragrance. It's very clean, it's not complicated, it's not a complex fragrance, but it's so soft, beautiful, gorgeous. And I've tried this together with my partner and the strangest things thing happened. On my partner, this new Hermes fragrance started off as a sharp, unpleasant citrus fragrance. And then 30, 40 minutes after that, on his skin, it developed as a unpleasant, affordable aftershave. So it was not a good fragrance. And then on me, it was a whole different story. On me, it started off as a fresh citrus fragrance um, with a touch of woody note. It's very clean, very soft, very elegant. I could definitely feel a scent of ginger mixed with the citrus and this soft woody scent. So I think that this is very important to test this fragrance on your skin. This fragrance is described as a surprising garden that's neither green nor floral, but blonde. And that's exactly how it develops on my skin. Now on my partner, it's a whole different story. So that's why I'm saying do not blind buy this fragrance. Go ahead, spray it on your skin and see how it's going to develop on your skin. Because this is one of the perfumes that definitely works with your own body scent, with your own body chemistry, um, and you have to try it on your skin. Because on me, it was incredibly soft, sophisticated, citrus, woody fragrance. I could definitely feel even a touch of white flower. So on my skin, it would uh, be very similar, like with a similar vibe to Petit Matin from Francis Kirk John. I love the fragrance. The only thing that's stopping me from buying a full bottle now is because I recently purchased four new fragrances that I have to start using those first. But I'm definitely considering to buy this one in June, July, because I think it is going to be incredibly beautiful for the summer season. So I would love to hear from you. If you've tried the new Jardin Inciter fragrance from Hermes, I would love to hear your thoughts. Tell me how it develops on your skin and what are your thoughts, because I've seen some reviews after I tried it and I was surprised to see that some people love it, other people hate it, don't really like it. I think that the main reason is because it just develops differently on the skin. So that's why I would say that this perfume is not a safe blind buy. Let me know if you've tried it in the comment section below. And also I would love to hear from you and let me know what are some of your current favorite makeup and skincare products? I am actually going to start using some exciting skincare products right now. I'm going to report in one of my next videos. So thank you so much for spending time with me and for watching my video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.